We're here at the Air and Space Museum's Udvar Hazy Center, and right now you're looking at the Enola Gay. It's one of the most famous airplanes from World War II. It was out of this plane that the first atomic bomb ever used in combat was dropped on August 6, 1945. The anniversary comes just days after the last surviving crew member from this plane, Theodore Van Kirk, passed away at age 93. Here to tell us a bit more about this plane, its design, and why it's so significant is Jeremy Kinney. He's one of the curators here at the museum. So Jeremy, tell us a bit about the design of this plane. It was really revolutionary when it was built back in the 1940s. And tell us a bit more about the significance of this plane. Sure. The Boeing B-29 is the world's most advanced propeller-driven airplane in 1945. It's capable of flying thousands of miles, carrying thousands of pounds of bombs, and delivering them in a precise way at its target. What happens with the world's first atomic bomber force is they elevate the idea of strategic bombing to one bomber, one bomb, and one city, which really becomes a terrifying prospect in the, in the annals of world history, especially mm -hmm. military history. Okay, so Jeremy, we're looking at the cockpit right now. Can you describe sort of where the, the crew members may have been sitting and maybe what they were doing? <laughs> Okay, in the cockpit area on our right, you have Paul Tibbetts, who's the plane commander. Uh, he names the aircraft after his mother, Nola Gay, so he's the pilot. Okay. To the left is Robert Lewis, the co-pilot, who's the original pilot of the airplane. And then down in the front, you see the Norden bomb site. So that's where Tom Farabee sat, and he actually is the person responsible for aiming and dropping the bomb on Hiroshima. So here we are getting a closer look at the plane. It's a lot bigger than I thought it would be. What are the actual specifications and can you show us where the bomb actually came out? Sure, the B-29 is an exceptionally large airplane for the time. It's 99 feet long, 30 feet tall, and 140 feet wide the wingspan. And so this is a big airplane. It's so big it has two bomb bays. But for the atomic mission, it's this front bomb bay that you see right, right in front of that there. bubble. Yeah. yeah, the doors would open and that's where the little boy bomb, the 10,000 pound uranium bomb, that's where it'd be carried and dropped. Take us through what happened on August 6th with the Enola Gay. Well, in the early hours of the morning, the Enola Gay takes off from Northfield at Tinian and six hours later, they arrive over Hiroshima. They aimed at a target in the center of the city and immediately destroys four uh, square miles of the city and starts those tens of thousands of casualties. Mm -hmm. Six hours later, they arrive back at Tinian and they are thinking about what has happened now that we've delivered this bomb and this idea of atomic warfare started and it's set the tone for us for the rest of the 20th century. Mm 